Yeah. 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 Hey there YouTube, the Dapper Dinosaur here with an update to the second phase of my speculative evolution project. We now have more organisms in phase 2 than in phase 1, and I'm not even close to having all of the organisms finished. There have been some great submissions, although a few submissions have been pushed off for phase 3. Because of the flood of submissions, and because I am but a single humble dinosaur, I am declaring that new submissions for phase 2 are going to close as of Thursday, the 16th of April, 2020. Any submissions after that day will simply be declined. That being said, let's see what we have so far. First up, we have Protomysanidae. The tiny Protomyso lavamisio is a fairly typical example of its family, pictured here. While they may look like vicious predators, they are in fact a group of herbivores and filter feeders, creature designed by H.M. Having descended from the humble Diomyso, some more active populations have evolved into the family Protomysanidae. Like their more basal ancestors, they still have two tagmata, with four eyes, four appendages, and eight limbs. However, that's where the similarities end. To begin, the position of their mouths have changed. Rather than being below the tagma, it now lays at the front, right in the center of its appendages, two at the top and one at either side. The top two appendages have now broadened for a larger surface area and more acute detection of smells and tastes, becoming more like feelers. The main eyes are now more advanced, with the two primary eyes being capable of seeing a greater array of color and at a longer range. Two smaller eyes rest on the dorsal side of the cephalon. These can see differences of lighting. Each pair has a different position. The primary eyes are situated at the sides of the tagma. Along with the top ones, this allows for a better chance of seeing predators coming. The posterior tagma now possesses slits rather than spiracles. These slits allow for a larger amount of water to enter their gills. In addition, a new swim bladder is connected between them. This aids in buoyancy by trapping air every time they go to the surface. In case they need to dive more quickly, they can eject the air through the gills by muscle contractions. Although still required for locomotion purposes, the muscles that resided within the legs now have adapted to work more efficiently. This in turn allowed for the limbs to pump even more blood by swimming. Their limbs became paddle-like and usually move in a synchronized pattern to reduce the cost of energy and drag. There are three known species in this family, but in order to learn more about them specifically, you'll have to visit the World Anvil page. The life cycle of the creature starts with an egg, or more precisely an egg sac, covered by mucus. The egg sac serves as a protection from would-be predators until the larvae grow large enough to come out into the world. The mucus covering them has two uses. One is to mask the scent of the eggs. The other is to provide a ready food source for the young. After growing large enough, they will travel into the open ocean in search of both food and a school for protection. Unlike their ancestors who were hermaphrodites, they have two sexes, a male and female. The genders can be distinguished by the lighting colors of the male's tagmata and the mating patterns that appear upon maturation. Once a female has reached the age in order to reproduce, she will release pheromones into the water. Any males capable of finding these with their upper feelers will swarm the female. However, she will only mate with mature males. She will then deposit an egg sac on a rock. The incubation period varies from species to species, but a week to four weeks is typical, with smaller species having a shorter gestation period. Each egg sac contains several hundred eggs. Open ocean species will often migrate to the coastal waters to reproduce. However, once an egg sac is laid, the next generation is left to fend for themselves. Several species have adapted their feeding appendages to have different keratinous protrusions for different food sources. Some filter feeding, while others feed off of vegetation. Their digestive tracts have also changed. Now, rather than having a one-way chamber from mouth to stomach, there is a second chamber, where the digested material is sent. Any organic material that enters the esophagus will pass into the primary stomach and is digested. It will then be sent to a smaller chamber below the first. In this chamber, any indigestible material is ejected by traveling a different tube that leads back to the mouth by using muscle contractions. Protomysanids are found on the open waters or near the coast of the continents. They are widespread and are often found mainly in schools for protection and reproductive purposes. The species are mostly found near the food source they are adapted to eat. Next we have Pelongigida. Pelongigida is a xenoradiatum predator of creatures up to just a little bit under its own size. Pelongigidas are quadriradial carnivores. They have a thin layer of keratin, used as a way to protect themselves. This armor is found everywhere but in between the body and the tentacles, and on the holes located in their bells. Small roundish protrusions can be found on the exterior side of the shells, and spiky ones can be found pointing to their medial side on the armor located on their tentacles. These spikes are used to catch and process prey. They have four eyes around their heads. 
While the eyesight is certainly not great, they are capable of giving the creature a 360 degree view and are capable of detecting variations in the amount of light and some colors. A mouth can be found on their ventral side, in between their tentacles. This mouth is used as a way for acquiring sustenance, for excreting unwanted substances, and for releasing gametes. The mouth leads into the stomach. Above the stomach, there is a reproductive gland, and above the gland, small rings can be found. These rings work much like the heart would, helping to pump oxygen through the body, and there is an agglomeration of nerve cells that can be found on top of this ring. They breathe and move by sucking water into holes located on their bells. This water will pass through the gills, and then will be quickly released through another hole. An organ responsible for keeping them buoyant can be found inside their bells. The tentacles are not technically jointed, but there are thin breaks in the keratin to increase flexibility. Pelongigetus can be either male or female and reproduce sexually. When they are ready to reproduce, they will try to find a mate. When one is found, they will lock their mouths together using their tentacles to hold onto each other and will then start releasing their gametes together. Pelongigetus have three distinct life stages. The first one is the egg. They will hatch over the course of a few weeks. The second one is a young Pelongigeta. They are very similar to their parents, but are way smaller than the adult. Their shells will begin growing along with them for the rest of their lives from now on. The third and last stage is the adult. An adult Pelongigeta is fully mature and is ready to mate. Pelongigetas will live in almost any body of salt water above the mesopelagic zone and near the continents. They will keep traveling so that they can find the food that they need to survive. Pelongigetas will eat almost anything that they can fit into their mouth, but will most likely cut them into smaller pieces first. And these are descendants of the filter globe. The lifespan is 6 local years, and their average height is 19 centimeters. Next, we have Bossio Magno. Bossio Magno is a purple-colored photosynthesizer which can grow up to 30 centimeters high. It has 1 to 5 leaves, a stem, a tuber, and roots. Bossio Magno has evolved to have 5 leaves instead of 1. This way, it takes in more sunlight and produces more energy. It also has evolved to store sugar in a tuber. Because of this, it can regrow fast whenever it is eaten, uprooted, or smashed. From the tuber grow roots, which extract nutrients and keep it grounded in the seabed. Bossio magno reproduces by vegetative propagation. It can expand in any direction on a horizontal plane. After 15 centimeters of horizontal root, a tuber will grow where a new plant will grow from. They also release reproductive cells from the center of the leaf, which are then carried away by currents to hopefully land in water with enough nutrients in the substrate and enough sunlight to support photosynthesis. Basio Magno is a primary producer and is fed on by Diamosa durospina, Diamosa minospina, Diamisa, and various bowbird species. Basio Magno can be found all along the continental shelf except around Arctica, where except at the southern margin of the continent, it is excluded by the cold water. Scientific name, Phytomycos Magno. Origin, retinal phyta. Average height, 30 centimeters. Now we come to the tiny minospina. Minospina is a small, parasitic creature that lives on the sap and juices of photosynthesizing creatures. It has evolved to have pointed legs so it can latch onto the stems of plants more easily. There are two subspecies, D. minospina grom and D. minospina lila. The former, pictured feeding on a chlorosuidopod, feeds primarily on phytozoans, and the later, retinal phytes. D. minospina lila is purple to blend in better with its retinal phyte hosts. Creature designed by Kipzilla. Minospina's four appendages have evolved into a pair of claws used for latching onto plants, cutting them open for food and self-defense. The other pair have evolved into sensitive antennae to enhance awareness. Its mouth has evolved into a tube-like structure to suck sap and juice out of photosynthesizing creatures. Minospina's legs have evolved, becoming pointy and, and curving medially. This way it can lash onto stems, leaves, and other bits. Minospina's stomach has increased in size to allow for more storage of sap and juice, and it has developed a through gut to excrete waste while allowing continual intake of sap. Minospina has evolved to have two sexes, male and female. They use external fertilization. First, the female deposits a foam made of green slime and ova. After it's outside the body, the female will spread out the foam thinly over the photosynthetic surface of the organism it sits on. After a while, a male minospina will arrive and release his gametes in the general area that is coated with the ova deposit. When the gametes meet, they will fuse together and form a shell. After nine days, the eggs will have grown to the maximum size and a small minospina will be born. Minospina can be found throughout shallow waters, where relatively large photosynthetic organisms that live primarily on the seabed can be found. Scientific name, Diamisa minospina. Origin, Paleotagmata. Lifespan, three local years. Average length, 0.5 centimeters. Bloomers are very small, algae-like creatures. They take advantage of both the nitrogen-rich atmosphere and minerals from the tides. Bloomers have evolved to be smaller than their ancestors were, as well as live shorter lives. Their main advantage is their high reproductive rate. When sediment is washed into the water, bloomers begin to reproduce in massive numbers, hence their name, bloomers. 
These are called bloomer colonies. Bloomers convert nitrogen in the atmosphere into nitrite using oxygen from the water to produce energy, unlike their photosynthesizing ancestors. Bloomer colonies usually last around 120 local days, before most of the minerals are taken in and their numbers begin to decrease. This does not completely kill the colonies, but it decreases their numbers exponentially. Designed by Dole Packaged Foods. Bloomers, like their ancestors, have a body made primarily out of a sheet. The sheet is not colored green due to the lack of chloroplasts. Instead, Viridi species are colored red. Their sheet is a much smaller version of the body plan left behind by Cecilia, having a similar but smaller oval shape. Bloomers have smaller tendrils off the back of their sheets, but they do not serve the function of movement. The tendrils are simply leftovers from their ancestors. When it comes time for a bloom, bloomers take in excess minerals and release seeds. These seeds float around in the mineral-rich water before maturing within days and hatching. The seeds either join the existing bloomer colony or are taken away by tides and spread elsewhere to form other bloomer colonies. Bloomers can be found in shallow waters where fresh sediments from land can wash in and tides can dissolve minerals from land. Those that wash out to deeper water starve. Scientific name, Ruber rudentis. Origin, Phytozoa. Lifespan, 0.8 local years. Average height, 0.25 centimeters. Average length, 2 centimeters. Octagis is a relatively simple retinal phyte that lives in the shallows throughout Almaisha's ancient oceans, designed by T.D. Lane. Unlike Jonetto, Octagis has fused its trapezoidal structures together and forms larger polygonal sections of varying sizes. This allows a much more efficient covering of the surface on which it grows. Buds form on certain sections, called pentages, which are always pentagonal. Most of the anatomy is much like Jonenno otherwise. Few sections of Octagis share nutrients. There are no other notable differences biologically when compared to Jonenno. Buds now form from pentages and will be ejected once mature. Each octagus will form one pentage for every six other segments. Octagus will grow new sections in trigonals, which fuse once fully grown. The time this takes depends on what kind of section it is. Trapeges take 31 to 32 hours to grow, pentages take 36 hours, hexages 39 hours, octages take 45 hours. Abnormal polygonal sections vary depending on size, but roughly take 77 hours to grow, and once they have landed, they will take 14 hours to reach stage 3. This is all assuming optimal conditions, growth stages are the same as Jonenno. Octagis is a producer that lives on rocks in any temperature of water, but thrives in cool waters due to lack of competition with pneumos. Unlike other members of Phytofungos, Octagis can survive in brackish coastal waters where fresh and salt water mix. Scientific name, Phytofungus Octagis. Origin, Retinal Phyto. Average height, buds are 1.3 cm, mature buds range from, mature buds range from 2.1 to 2.2 cm, sections, are 4 millimeters tall. Durospina is a large herbivore growing up to 20 centimeters long. It has evolved a hard shell on top of its body. It moves slowly, but is sturdy and strong. Creature designed by Kipzilla. The four cephalic appendages of Diomisa have evolved into a pair of claws with calcified teeth and a pair of sensory antennae. The claws are used to cut food items into smaller parts so they can be easily eaten. The antennae help locate food and are sensitive to pressure changes, which assist in noticing predators. When threatened, the Durospina can tuck its pseudopods under its shell and partially curl up. It will then lash out with its claws. The shell is made of keratinized dead cells. This makes it so that the younger Durospinas don't have as much protection. Durospina can cover nearly all of its body when it curls and tucks its legs. Durospina release eggs in a hole dug near food, usually a Bossio magno tuber. Durospina are true hermaphrodites, and a pair will usually dig two separate nest holes, one for each to release eggs into, which the other will then fertilize. Durospina eat foods such as retinal phytes and opportunistically will eat phytozoans as well. It is preyed on by proboscognathids. Durospina can only be found in the shallowest waters where Bossio magno can also be found, and it is excluded from the coldest waters near Arctica. Durospina must consume large amounts of food, and so it is always either moving, eating, or mating, except for a few hours each day when it hides under rocks to sleep. Durospina's antennae are sensitive to touch, pressure, temperature, and are chemoreceptors. Its eyes have some limited image-forming ability and are an additional aid in detecting both food and predators. Scientific name, Diamosa durospina. Origin, Xenotagmata. Lifespan, 5 local years. Average length, 20 centimeters. Ipresi is a relatively basal xenosegmatum that has adapted to life on the ocean floor. Creature designed by T.D. Lane. Ipresi is composed of three segments, all of which possess small limbs used for movement along the seafloor. The first segment has fleshy mandibles at the mouth that are used for tearing pieces of its primary food source, retinal phytes. The first and second segments have a pair of eyes, although the ones on the second segment are smaller. All segments possess gill fronds on them at the posterior ventral margin of each segment. It has a coelom that forms anterior first and then ends in an anus at the posterior of the third segment. 
The top 28-30% to 30 of the skin is a semi-hardened carapace that is made primarily of alpha-keratin. This carapace goes from the posterior of each segment to the anterior, with holes in it for eyes on segments with them. The digestive tract of Epressi extends through the third segment where it breaks down organic matter while passing any detritus or inedible soil. While this is not abnormal, the notable difference is the primary cavity in the second segment, which digests organic matter slightly before it moves to the posterior gut. The only other notable thing about Epressi's biology is its sensitivity to temperature. Epressi are sequential hermaphrodites. Females will change gender after about 4-5 to five years. After changing to male, Epressi will remain so for the rest of their lives. Epressi's optimum temperature for survival is 27 Celsius, but can survive in temperatures as low as 23 Celsius and as high as 32 Celsius. As a result, it tends to live in the shallows in the tropics. Epressi feeds on retinal phytes, primarily pneumos, due to how common it is in the tropics. Epressi has two pairs of eyes. The anterior pair are capable of distinguishing light from dark and have a full range of view of what's in front of the organism. The posterior pair can only see upwards and functions similarly to the anterior pair. Scientific name? Analopoda epressi. Origin? Xenosigmata. Lifespan? 5 to 8 local years, depending on temperature. Epressi fares better in warm water. Average length, 4.7 centimeters. Finally, we have Pneumos. Pneumos is a derived descendant of Joneno and is very similar to it in shape and lifestyle. Pictured here with a Durospina and Eupressi, both of which feed on Pneumos, creature designed by T.D. Lane. Pneumos is almost identical to Joneno. The major difference between them is the formation of two throughout the sections of the organism, allowing the transfer of nutrients. This system is driven from the center of the organism, which has a contracting tube that pumps nutrient-carrying fluid throughout the sections. The vascular system allows buds and sections to grow far quicker as they can draw from the nutrients of the whole organism. The system is more energy intensive though. Otherwise, pneumos functions identically to Joneno. One small difference is that pneumos sections are less regular than those of Joneno. Pneumos reproduces asexually with buds which form and mature on the parent before being released into the current. Once these buds land on a hard surface, such as a rock, they will stick to it due to the adhesive they produce. Pneumos grows similarly to Joneno, but generally faster. The growth of sections depend on how old the organism is and how rich the environment is, ranging from 17 hours in optimal conditions to 60 hours at worst. Buds range from 62 hours to 101 hours. Time from landing until full grown is slightly longer than 15.3 hours. This is due to the additional stage in between stage 2 and what was stage 3. The new stage 3 is the formation of a hollow tube through the center of the body. The former stage 3 in Joneno is now stage 4 and has the additional growth of contractile tissue around the hollow tube formed in stage 3. Pneumos is found throughout tropic and temperate shallows, but cannot survive in cooler arctic waters due to its high energy requirements and the need for consistent sunlight. Much like Joneno, it lives on hard surfaces such as rocks and acts as a producer. Scientific name? Phytovasculos pneumos. Origin? Retinal phyta. Average height? Sections are 3 mm. Average length? Buds are 1 cm. Mature buds range from 1.8 to 2 cm. Well, that's it for the first update of several for Phase 2. Remember, if you're watching this when it premieres, you have less than a week to still submit organisms. Please include the range of your organism, a sketch, or other image, and as detailed a description as you can. If you liked this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. It really helps the channel out. I'm the Dapper Dinosaur. Thanks for watching. But before you go, I'd like to thank my patrons, especially my Diapsid and Above patrons Ben Tovend, Ian Chen, Chris Love, Henry Hutanen, Bob Knob, and the Evil Scotsman. In this time of global difficulty, the support of my patrons means a lot to me. If you would like to join the team, a link to my Patreon is in the description. The first tier is only a dollar, and you can get access to the exclusive patron-only Discord server. If a monthly pledge isn't right for you, but you'd still like to support the channel, I also have a Teespring store and an Amazon wishlist, both linked in the description. Well, interesting question. I don't know. I don't know.